You're done. Yes! Well, holy cow. Hasbin Hotel has been confirmed to release next year and during the objective best season of summer, no less. In the summertime. In the summertime. <laughs> well then, we've got some celebrating to do, haven't we? And while the demons party in their own way with like, I don't know, 900 great alcohol and virgin sacrifices or something, we're gonna party in the only way this channel knows how. Scrutinizing character designs. Let me just move that mouse for you, and there you go. Okay, but for real, if you saw part one, you know how this works. We're gonna pit the new redesigns up against the OG OCs, play a little game of spot the demon difference, and ultimately decide which is the overall better look with a score out of 10. We've already covered the four main players in the cast, which means now we're going to do the minor characters. These guys obviously have less screen time and personality than the big boys, which means the designs will be a lot more important when it comes to overall memorability. The stakes are higher than angel dust on a lonely night, so let's cut the fluff and get right to it. If you have any thoughts on these new redesigns, or any thoughts on my thoughts, be sure to leave a comment below. But for now, let's see if these new demon glow-ups will make me want to cheer or throw up. Off we go! Let's start with everyone's favorite card-conjuring Sakura, complete with fluffy birdo wings, Husk. At first, Husk's design stood out to me as the most needlessly busy. There's so much minor detail in the way this guy looks. Poker print symbols on his eyebrows, paws, and both the interior and exterior of his wings. So many extra lines and gradients of color on his eyebrows, tail, and everywhere else. This guy brings a whole new meaning to the term read him and weep. Because the animators probably read the details of his character design and wept because of how much they'd have to draw now. <laughs> but the more time has gone by, the more I've come to appreciate this old husky look. While the poker print patterns may seem excessive at first, they actually hint at a lot of things which the show can expand upon later on. According to Viv, Husk was a massive fan of magicians when he was alive, and even to this day, magic is the only thing that's able to, and I quote, melt his crusty heart. Aww. He even uses his sleight of hand to cheat at poker apparently, as shown before Alistair beams him over to the hotel. And despite his gruff exterior, there are hints that he can be a real softy under the surface, despite claiming that he lost his ability to love years ago. So the whole idea of hiding poker symbols all over his body is actually twofold, showing his natural affinity for hiding cards on his person, a la magic, and also the idea that there is a heart hidden under all that salt. Who knows? Maybe one day Rick Sanchez's persona will be able to truly spread his wings and fly sober once more. I love that. On top of that, his Topham hat looks spiffy and is another hint at his magic-loving roots, along with his fur dicky and spats. He's got this constant shade over his face, probably to emphasize how gray and miserable he always is, and the whole winged cat design not only looks cool, but was actually not conceived by Vivzi, but by her sibling, simply known as M. And after multiple redesigns, including a Zoophobia reincarnation and a more bleached fur look, they eventually settled on the pilot kitty we all know and love today. Overall, I've warmed up to this husky boy's design a lot as I've read into him, but I do not envy the animators that had to bring him to life. So, what's new, Pussycat? <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> He's got little fur suspenders. Oh, I love it. Whew, okay, for real though, Husk's new look is okay, I guess. I've got the same feelings towards him as I do towards Charlie's redesign, where not a ton has changed, but the things they did change kind of take away from the uniqueness a bit. I do like that his hat is a little bit bigger and his bow tie is more detailed, his eyebrows went from red and faded red to red and black, which is a lot more striking, and... <laughs> I can't get over the suspenders, man, I freaking love it! I want to give it a 10 just for those! With that being said though, I am not a fan of his new wings. They swapped out the poker symbols for generic circles now, which takes away from the subtle hints I mentioned earlier. He's supposed to be a card-hiding sleight-of-hand professional with hidden heart. What the heck kind of poker card just has a circle on it? Are we playing Go Fish? They did hide another heart inside of his ear, which is kind of cute, but I actually think it would have been better if you swapped the symbols. Leave the hearts on the wings and put the circle in the ear. You know, kind of hinting at the classic coin-behind-the-ear magician trick. That could have been cool, right? Oh, well, at least they kept the heart on the palm of his paw, so that's nice, I guess. 
Overall, this redesign is okay, but I definitely do prefer the original. So I'll give Husk's OG look an 8.5, and his new look, eh, 7.5. That one missing detail really does take away a lot from me, but it still looks pretty sharp. Alrighty, let's skitter on over to our next hotel helper, Nifty. Nifty is by far the least explored character in the entire cast, basically appearing on screen for less than a minute and only having a few lines of dialogue. She emerges from the fireplace, introduces herself, shows that she's hornier than a big band brass section, and immediately gets to work tidying up the joint. But while we don't learn too much about her in the show itself, I do have to admit that her design does tell us a lot with very little. Heh, <laughs> see what I did there? She allegedly died in the 1950s, hence the whole poodle skirt and Judy Neutron hairdo, which looks freaking adorable on her by the way, her spindly legs fits with her tendency to skitter around like a spider on speed, her cyclops anatomy might be hinting at the fact that she has a wandering eye for the opposite sex, as she's clearly shown in the pilot, and the blood stain on her dress… well… her backstory hasn't exactly been revealed just yet, but… Not gonna point any fingers. Overall, there isn't too much to Nifty, but her design does a good job of illustrating what little character this little character does have, and I think it looks really cute overall. But now it's time for the redesign, so let's see how our little half pint was made up. Oh! Dang. She was literally made up. Interesting. I don't know guys, I'm having a crisis of conscience here. On one hand, the maid outfit definitely fits with her overall spiffy nature, and is most likely what she would wear if she dressed for work, similar to Vaggie's redesign. Also, it's just scientific fact that the maid outfit is one of the cutest ensembles ever created, so putting that on an already cute character is like putting giant eyes on a kitten. It's a match made in hell. But on the other hand, I kinda miss the poodle skirt. It subtly implied her time of death while at the same time looking really good on her and being very stand out from the outfits of the rest of the cast. They do retain the blood stains on both looks, which I appreciate, and her black scarf is noticeably bigger in the redesign, which I just think looks really cute, but her skin has gone from pale yellow to just pure white, which I'm not really huge on. Also, it seems like her eye has a lot less orange coloration and a lot more red, which I'm also not a fan of either. I honestly really liked her overall warm color scheme in the OG design. It kind of gave off the vibe of a cozy fireplace like the one she emerged from, and it was something else that stood out alongside every other cast member who was just black and white and red all over. Now she's just following the crowd and I think she ends up being a bit more generic for it. So bottom line, really like the maid outfit, not huge on the new color choices, kind of missed the poodle skirt, so where does that leave us? Honestly, I think she kind of breaks even. I like both designs in their own ways and I couldn't really say that I prefer one over the other. At least not by too much. So I'll give her original design an 8, and her new design an 8. I was leaning more towards 7.5 since I do like her old colors more, but the cuteness of the maid outfit does boost it up by at least an extra half a point. Keep your eyes on the skies, folks, and prepare to quake with fear and pity, Serpentis is slithering on in. Honestly, this guy's just hilarious. Classic over-the-top villain aesthetics, old-school steampunk technology, goofy and maniacal voice and laugh, and enough ham to pair perfectly with those little egg minions of his. He's fantastic. And yet underneath all those antagonistic eggscapades, you do get hints of lonely sad boy vibes from the way he acts and talks, like his how do you do fellow kids, homage showing how desperate he is to fit in, or his eyes genuinely lighting up when he confuses Angel for his long lost son. I know it's a joke, but it's also kind of adorable, and hints that he may want a family one day, a fact that Vivzi has actually confirmed. And speaking of eyes, while his overabundance of them can be seen as a visual representation of him always watching you and always having an eye on you, I like to think that maybe they imply a constant need to prove his worth, always having people view him as a failure or an embarrassment, a feature that is now permanently etched into his physical form. You kind of feel sorry for the guy more than anything. It's like he's the doofenshmirtz of hell or something. Soup dis in a blimp again! Aside from the eyes, I also like his slender, snake-like appearance, with snakes always being typecast as antagonistic, and his little emotive top hat, which apparently always reflects his true inner emotions, no matter what he displays on his actual face. So never play poker, my guy. You would lose a hand faster than you lose a turf war.
Overall, Pentis didn't really have much bearing on the plot, but he was still a fun character and his design is about as mustache-twirling villain as you can get, even if he doesn't have any facial hair. Now behold, the new design in Ator! Huh. Are you sure this guy didn't just fade in the wash or something? Okay, so it looks like things were kept relatively similar for the most part. He's taken on a more light gray color scheme for his pinstripe suit instead of black, which I think looks pretty good. They added some goggles to his sentient top hat, because we all know it is an unbreakable law that any steampunk headgear must have goggles on it even if you don't use them. The eyes along his body look a bit more uniform, where instead of having two rows, he now has just one going down the middle, much cleaner looking, very nice. Instead of an eye in his undershirt, he now has one in his bow tie, which technically makes it a bow to eye now. His head's got a little bit more shape to it. He's a little more stocky and less lanky. Overall, good stuff. Much like Angel and Alistair's redesigns, they didn't change too much, but what they did change, I like. As for numbers, if his original design was an 8.5, I'm going to give this one a 9. One of this serpent's evil schemes actually worked out in his favor this time, and I can't wait to see what pathetic plans he'll have for us in the full series. Alright, let's wrap up our looks at the minor characters with a maniacal terrorist who's constantly prodding the DJ to play that funky music, white boy. You, you know, because... Wild Cherry? And... Well, whatever, it's Cherry Bomb. I don't want to say she's my least favorite character in Has Been, but she's my least favorite character in Has Been. I don't know, I do like her literally explosive personality, her conflict with Pentis is pretty fun, and she's a really good friend to Angel Dust, but I don't really have as much deep investment in her character as I do with the other Has Been Hellions. She's kind of like a fireworks display. She's fun when you watch her, but once it's over, the excitement kind of fades and you move on to other things. She's fine, but I'm definitely not a super fan or anything. She's just bottom of the list by default, basically. Her design is really fitting, at least. Definitely leaning into the anarchist angle of her character as much as possible. She's got a red crop top and mini skirt, as well as black leggings that look like they've been through a war zone, which they probably have. She's wearing one go-go boot and one flat, as well as two different sized gloves, which adds a small hint of chaos to her wardrobe. She's got tattoos aplenty, as well as some crazy looking hair, which shows her tendency to walk on the wild side. And her overall look definitely gives off the vibe of someone you do not want to see with a bomb in their hands. Because it'll be out of their hands and in your mouth if you make one wrong move. So yeah, not a huge fan of CB's character, but her design definitely succeeds in what it sets out to do. Now let's see what they've cooked up with her brand new look. Uh, okay, you changed her pose, but I wanted to see her new redesign. Can we get a picture of that, please? What? Oh. That is her new redesign? Well, shoot. What the heck am I going to talk about for this segment? Okay, out of all of the Double H cast, Cherry Bomb had by far the least amount of changes to her original design. I guess you could say it's a why change perfection kind of mindset, but it would have been nice to see something different. Let's see, um, she has some new dots on her shoulder, which is kind of interesting. Uh, her shoes have much more pointed toes now. So there's that, um, her hair has a slightly different gradient effect now? Okay, no more beating around the bush. These two designs are nearly identical to each other, so there's no use in scoring one any higher than the other. So if my score for the original was a seven, this one also gets a seven. Same sized explosion, same impact, not much else to say. Okay, well, this is where I originally planned to end things, but we're not quite done yet. Because on the Fright Stay night of All Hallows Eve, Bipsy dropped the triple threat of redesigns on top of us out of nowhere for the three characters that really put the V in Overlord. Valentino, Velvet, and Vox. I don't really have much to say about their characters because, well, they aren't characters. They're essentially background decorations for the pilot to add to the world building, with only implied characterization from Vivzi and the rest of the crew. You see this? This is all the screen time they have in the pilot. This is all you see of these three in the actual episode, so there's not much to work with. We do know that Valentino and Angel have a bit of a rocky patch together, and Alistair apparently has a seething disdain for Vox and his television ways, but other than that, not much else to say. Their designs are kinda neat. Vox looks like Serpentis with his pinstripe suit and bow tie as well as a top hat. His head obviously resembles a television, though it looks like a flat screen TV which came out in 1997, even though he's supposed to be from the 1950s. 
I like the little details like the TV signal waves on his hat and undershirt, the antennae on his head and stuff like that. And overall, he looks about as intimidating and villainous as any mainstream news network. Velvet's got a kind of ragdoll look to her with a stitch looking face, raggedy hair, and an old style China doll dress. Apparently she's supposed to be a social media queen, complete with smartphone obsession. So I'm curious about why she dresses like she's from Alice in Wonderland. Is she doing cosplay for her followers? Is she a Valentino fangirl who tries to dress like him? I honestly have no clue. And speaking of Valentino, well, the guy's just a pimp. Like, literally, that's pretty much it. He's got the red tinted sunglasses, the feather hat, the big fur coat, he's smoking a ciggy. All he's missing is the golden tipped cane. He honestly just looks like a Pikmin that became a pimp. A pimpman, if you will. Again, I don't have much to say about these guys since they're not established characters yet, but they are decent to look at and keep up the track record of Vivzi having awesome designs even for the characters that don't entirely matter. But does that sentiment carry over into their new looks? Oh! <laughs> well, one third of this picture definitely has me interested. Yeah, Vox and Val didn't really change that much, honestly. Vox has a little bit of electricity surging through his antennae, which is kind of cool. The inside of his collar is white now instead of black, which is fine, I guess. He's missing that hypnotic swirl in his eye and those red lines on the side of his face, but his smile definitely looks a lot more sinister. And his bow tie has a bit more detail to it as well. Definitely a tad more spiffy than his original design. As for Val, he got a little more heartfelt, with way more hearts on his design than before. He's got an extra gold heart on his midriff, way more hearts on both of his hat's feathers, and the little specks on his coat collar have a more defined heart shape to them. I get that he's a pimp and he owns a porn studio, but don't you think that's a little bit too much heart? He's becoming more on the nose by the second despite not even having a nose. But Velvet is the one who really shines here. Now this is what you call a glow up. This is definitely a girl that I could picture as a social media queen. The smug, I'm better than you smile rather than that dirt bite expression she used to have, that more smooth, swirly looking hairstyle instead of her old messy mop, and a much more modern looking outfit that still retains the old heart aesthetic. Plus I really like the gloves having bold black stripes instead of just white and red. It makes them pop a lot more. Also, you know the Vivzy Pop store is going to be selling velvet print phone cases once she becomes a major player. Overall, we've got a decent trio here with one major highlight and a couple of hard miss. If you want numbers real quick, Vox goes from a 7 to a 7.5, Val goes from a 7 to a 6.5, and Velvet goes from a 6 to an 8.5. I'm sure that we'll be seeing how the three Vs behave in the full show, and you better believe that I'll be tuning in to see it. You think Vox's face has remote control? Okay, now we are officially done with the has-been hotel redesigns. Unless maybe Viv releases something for Katie Killjoy or Tom Trench or the goats or whatever. And if she does, I'll probably do like a short or something. But other than that, I guess all we have to do now is wait. Vivzi and the Spindle Horse crew are finally going to have all their hard work pay off once HH hits the TV. But for the time being, what do you guys think? Do you think these redesigns are worthy of the show? Or do you prefer some of the OG character looks instead? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.